But right now, I want to introduce you to another great Mexican cook, Enrique Olvera. Enrique, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Good to have you here. <laughs> great having you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Enrique, you have two restaurants that I know of, right? Pujol in Mexico City, which has been open for how many years? 16 almost. Oh, my. Oh, That's my. Crazy. And now... I was 24 when I opened. Oh, my God. <laughs> and now you're only 25. It's just... Yeah, it exactly. Has it's crazy. Yes. Time goes. Um, and then you now have, for a year now in, Mexi in uh, New York, Cosme. That's right. But your Mexican food is not like any Mexican food most of us ever see. And I remember eating at Pujol. And I have to tell you honestly, I'm always skeptical when uh, I hear about a restaurant in a place with an incredible wealth of cuisine that goes back thousands of years. And someone says, there's this restaurant doing absolutely new Mexican food. And I think, oh my God, here we go again. <laughs> you know, it's going, to be, it's going to be Mexican ingredients with French techniques. And it's not going to taste like either one. And I went to Pujol, and you did a version of the corn stew, elote, is yes. that it? Yeah, that, that I had just had early that morning in the market. Special corn was just coming into season, and I think there were three or four different kinds of corn in it. And out came this presentation that looked nothing like what was in the market. And the thing that blew me away was it tasted like that corn in the market, but it was as though the chorus of all those different types of corn had been totally harmonized, and Mozart had turned them into this aria in my mouth. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I was blown away. You know, it was like, at last. This is... So I'd like you to explain your food, your Mexican food, and we're going to do it with a series of slides from your new book, which, by the way, is called Mexican... It's Mexican food... It's Mexico from the inside out. That's it, yes. And, and I'd like you to take us inside your head. Yes. So could we have the first slide? Now, what we're looking at here is your... They're, they're tacos, right? This one is tortillas, actually. I'm sorry, tortillas, and but I know they're tortillas. Yeah, it's Excuse the base me. for the tacos. I'm very embarrassed. I guess it's just <laughs> the. I completely agree with you. I when when I travel, not only in Mexico but in general, I like to go to the markets. I like to go to the casual restaurants, but I also love the discovery of a new flavor, and the discovery of a new sensation. Mm -hmm. So I kind of indulge in both things, and. When we cook, we try to have those two things in mind. Uh, the power of tradition and that strength in flavor and that soul and that history that has been carried in, in those flavors. But also the fact that I love uh, tasting something new. Um, so, for example, with the tortillas, we figured we want to make the best tortilla that we can. And I remember telling uh, one of my sous chefs that is from Oaxaca, Luis, I told him uh, when he jumped into the restaurant, I told him, your job will be to get the perfect tortilla. Um, and he looked at me and he's like, you're crazy, no? Like, <laughs> you brought me from Oaxaca no, to Mexico City and you're making me uh, do tortillas. And, and he didn't understand at that point the importance of tortillas because it was so close to him and so uh, personal that it, he didn't think it was special. And I think that happens to a lot of food cultures around the world. Uh, like you've said, uh, French reigned the world, uh, and it's still very important. And the other cuisines were kind of lesser cuisines. And now I think after 20 years, uh, congratulations on that, um, the food world has changed so much. And now uh, all cuisines, I think, are equally, not only flavorful, but equally sophisticated. And held in higher regard. So what are we seeing? I know this is not food coloring. <laughs> no, no, no. So what, what, what are we actually seeing here? 
Uh, we like to play with our food. My mom told me not to, so, and I like going against my mom. <laughs> so <laughs> we like to play with the tortillas. Tortillas kind of like dough. That's what I love about playing with them. So we've, uh, first we started just adding flavor to them. Uh, there's 60 varieties of corn that are native to Mexico, the 60 families, I should say. And then there's crossbreeding between those families, so the combinations are almost endless. They right? go on, oh my. So in the beginning we started uh, talking about corn like you would talk about wine, right? So yeah. if you, you never go to a wine bar and say like, I'll have a glass of wine. No, you have to tell them a little bit more information. Tortillas is the same. You can't talk about corn tortillas and, and flour tortillas. You need to talk about which kind of corn, if it's yellow, red, black, purple, even green. Where is it coming from? If it's a conico, which is like, conico means like a, it's like a cone, yeah. bolita, which is like a little ball. Those, those are the, the families. Mm -hmm. and which town does it come from? Because it is an expression of terroir. Corn, the corn here is completely different from the corn uh, in Mexico. So it does show where it grows. And if you pay attention and if you put a tortilla in, in, and, you, in yeah. and you smell it, you can actually smell the difference. And obviously when you put it in your mouth, you can, you can taste the difference. Um, so that's the first approach. And then once you get that under, understood, then you can start combining... Um, flavors into, into the tortillas with nextamalize, which is a process by which you make corn. That's uh, where lime is added to the corn. Yes, the lime. And it loosens the, the hard or the very, well, the very hard skin on the corn. That's right. But it also adds that, that almost perfume that we always smell. Exactly. When we smell. Yeah, that that's, to me, that smells like home. No, that's like my favorite thing to smell. Yeah. I could wear that all the time if I could. <laughs> I don't know. I totally understand. I kind of smell like that anyways when I go home. So. <laughs> um, but that nixtamalization process, you can apply it to different things. You know, uh, in desserts, you, it's traditionally done with papayas and with uh, oh, squashes. Really? Yeah. So we started nixtamalizing other things um, like apples and then it's beautiful because then you can make apple tortillas that will go well with pork, right? Apples and pork is a good combination. Right, right. So we, we try to think a little bit like this. Uh, of course, we try to be respectful, but I, I also think uh, this generation of, of cooks and any generation of cook has a responsibility to create new recipes, no? There, at some point, somebody made a tortilla, somebody made mole, somebody made uh, chiles en hogada. Yeah. We need to keep generating those recipes. And if we don't play with our food and we don't, of course we're gonna fail most of the time and most of the things will not last uh, for a long time because that's just the dynamic of creativity. Yeah. But maybe one day in a few years, somebody will create the new taco al pastor. It's, I think you know, this is something I think a lot of us don't think much about because, you know, you're, unlike some of us who live and breathe the subject of food, it, other people have lives. And, <laughs> but, but it's true that there was never a time when a clock stopped and, and everything that came before was traditional and authentic. And then everything that came after, well, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's not that. And... I think that's something that's sometimes hard to remember when you run into something you don't understand. I, I, I had th was always thinking about your food does not look like the Mexican food we generally know. I want to show the next slide, please, because here's where one of those tortillas becomes the foundation of something that is essentially Taco. what we can go and eat at El Borito, for instance. <laughs> Right? It's, it's a barbecue or essentially lamb cooked in, in a sauce. But explain what we're looking at here. So this is a... All the, excuse, I just have to say one thing. All the elements that we normally associate with going out and having Mexican food are here. But they've passed through the mind of this man and his, his, <laughs> his associates. So yeah. now, I'm sorry. Now you can it, tell us. <laughs> yeah. 
It tastes better than it looks, actually. <laughs> I think it looks, I think it really looks pretty swell, yeah. as a matter of fact. We, we focus on flavor. We always focus on flavor. That's our main goal is to make delicious food. Uh, and we take pride in our job. We, we like to, uh, we're detail oriented. We uh, enjoy things that are well made. And therefore, we, when we cook, we pay attention to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason in Mexico, uh, when you go to the street food, when you go have a taco, the flavor is amazing, the salsa is amazing, the tortilla is beautiful, and they, for a reason, they always overcook the protein. And I've never understood this. No, safety? They, I don't know if it's safety, the quality that they can get of the protein. The possibility. Uh, this is not very, this, this is not common knowledge, but also uh, uh, in Mexico, most of our cooking is vegetarian. No, you don't eat meat that much. Um, and I think that has something to do with it, transportation, refrigeration, mm -hmm. all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we wanted to do when we made tacos is to create a, a taco that was our own. Uh, we've, I don't think there's many new tacos out there. Most tacos are basically the same. Uh, you can have a pastor or a bistec or a barbacoa. You can make your taco. You can make a taco yourself. Pretty creative. When I go back home at night, you know, I open the fridge, grab a tortilla, whatever is there, and I make myself a taco. And yeah. there's things that come up, um, even dessert-wise. Like it's really good with Nutella, uh, <laughs> especially after. You, a few, you write about Especially af after a few mezcales, it's really good for you. Yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> You also talk yeah. about just a really good slice of avocado with lime and salt in a yeah. warm tortilla. And guess what lunch was for me? That's for you me. You inspired yeah. me. I can't <laughs> tell you. It was so good. <laughs> That's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Tortillas and avocado is the perfect thing to uh -huh. eat. Uh -huh. So this one is just a, a tortilla that we make with uh, chile poblano. And then we cook the barbacoa traditionally like uh, you would do in Oaxaca. I'm, I am from Oaxaca, but my mom didn't ask me. So I was born in the FA, but I'm from Oaxaca. I see. Uh, so, but the barbacoa in Oaxaca, you cook it with, with an adobo, and it has also avocado leaves. And traditionally, you will uh, eat that with a little piece of, of avocado. So we added the avocado and then chicharos, which is in the center of... We, we always try to mix references. Um, I think cuisine is always contextual. And the context of Mexico City is that there is no context. Uh, no, there's because everything Because everybody happening. comes there, right? From everywhere. So we were very fortunate in that way because we can do whatever the hell we want. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> although some people don't like it, but uh, I guess it's, it's all so about So the flavor. little balls that I'm looking at, that's, that's guacamole, isn't it? Yeah, it's just pu uh, avocado puree. Uh, with avocado a little, puree. Yeah, so with a little uh, peas. And I know there was a big discussion about peas and avocados. <laughs> I've always felt that if you keep your mind open, it's, you're, so, you're in a much better place. <laughs> no, if, if we didn't have our minds open as Mexicans, there will be no taco al pastor, because it's a kebab made with pork, which is not from Mexico, with a pineapple on top that you sometimes put in a flour tortilla, you add cheese right, on it, right. and then salsa. That's the least Mexican thing I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> And yet, it's the staple of the FN. So. We have time for one more slide. Could we All do right. one more slide, please? This is the slide. All right. They can do the next two together, I think. All right, let's do this. Let's do the mole. And the next one, please. OK. Now, uh, that first one of someone stirring. That's, is, they were stirring that. They were stirring that. Okay. Yeah. Can you briefly explain what mole is? Because to me, it's one of the crowns. Mole, oh. is, the, mole is everything. Mole is a sum of, of everything that a, I think a cook can aspire, no? which is to put a lot of things together and come up with a new flavor. Uh, and that's what mole actually is. No, it's uh, it's the... the complexity of simplicity and how something that is so baroque can be also very powerful and that's why we like serving it on itself. Uh, we've reheated this mole for almost 800 days now 
uh, and we used like the starter though system uh, of bread into the mole because it is well known in towns that the mole, usually mole is made for weddings, right? So the next day uh, you reheat whatever you have left over and it's like turkey in Thanksgiving, it's always better the next day. Right, right. So mole is the same thing. So we just keep reheating and reheating. And but reheating. you know, it's one thing to be better the next day or two, but to be better than 800 days later. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, yes. but, but literally it's aged then. Yes, it's aged and obviously we add new mole every time, like every week or every two weeks, we make new mole and then put it into the old one. And then the little dot in the center is actually new mole because the, the old mole is so tired of being reheated. But probably very lush too. Yes, yeah. it needs a little of the new mole. <laughs> Enrique, thank you. Thank you so this much. This has been <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>